no digestive organs and no genital organs. This is how an eyewitness described the extraterrestrial aliens of the Roswell UFO crash. The late American UFO researcher Stanton Terry Friedman, 1934 to 2019, as it suddenly turned out, kept in his files a letter from a man who claimed that his father was an eyewitness to the alien bodies in Roswell in July 1947. And the letter sent to Friedman in 2010 was accidentally discovered by another researcher who runs the Spanish language blog Mystery Planet and who is prepared, preparing a museum exhibiting uh, exhibition de uh, dedicated to Friedman. The new eyewitness account comes from a letter from a man named Sean, his last name is also on the letter but withheld to protect his privacy, who stated that his father was one of the group sent to his uh, the desert in New Mexico to help remove all traces of the alien craft from there. In 1973, I bought a magazine that described the abduction of two men by aliens while they were fishing at night. The story of the abduction fascinated me. I showed the magazine to my father and he asked him if he thought, and asked him if he thought it really happened and if he believed UFOs were real. To my surprise, my father told me that they were indeed real because he saw one of them up close. I asked him when and where he saw it and he told me the following story. In the summer of 1947, his father was at the Fort Worth Army Base in Texas to train the reserve team. One night, while he and other pilots were sitting playing cards, an officer came in and said they needed volunteers to fly to New Mexico urgently. It sounded like something had happened and it was an emergency. His father immediately volunteered for the mission. It was July 6, his birthday, but when they took off, he immediately understood that the matter was really serious because they flew full, that is, full of weapons. And with them, he was still flying a bomber. Uh, with him was a general. When Sean's father asked what was going on, one of the officers told him that a missile landed on U.S. soil. The general knew that my father was familiar with modern aircraft and asked my father to look at this wreckage and tell him what it was. My father said that this wreckage was like unlike anything he had ever seen before, writes Sean. Alien craft from Roswell, as depicted in the TV series The X-Files. Later, Sean's father told him that the fragments of the flying saucer were made of an incredibly light and at the same time super strong, previously unknown material, which some soldiers called, uh, used the word unobtainium. Some parts could not be bent, others were extremely flexible. There were also some items that looked rusty on the outside or had been exposed to very high temperatures. There were no noticeable welds or rivets on the boat, on this craft, and my father said it looked like the whole ship was like it had come out of a mold. No motors or moving part, no visible wires, switches, tubes, or any kind of electronics. There were some hard pieces of plastic that he called spaghetti or tubes and of no apparent function. Some of the pieces had strange letters on them that my father had never seen before, only on the inside of the vessel. There were no inscriptions whatsoever on the outside. There were also loose items with no apparent purpose. The strangest object he said he found were child-sized metal folding seats with recesses for the head, body, arms, and legs, including hand recesses with recesses for six fingers. There were no bodies on the ship. After inspection, Sean's father reported to the general that the debris was definitely not U.S. military equipment. When asked if he thought it was a rocket or a jet, he replied, neither. When the general asked Sean's father if he thought the Russians built it, he replied, no, and also those inscriptions inside are not in Russian, Sean's father said. My dad said he helped the team pick up some of the debris until other soldiers and intelligence officers arrived and told them to leave. He said they returned to the local air base and then flew the wreckage back to Fort Worth the next day. And then three small bodies covered in chunks of ice were loaded into his plane. 
The military told him they were the crew of the downed alien craft. The ice was melting, and according to my father, the bodies were dismembered and smelling bad. He was able to examine the bodies, and obviously they knew, they, uh, knew that they were not from this planet. And here's what he told me from his comments. They were humanoid with one head, two arms, two legs, two eyes, one mouth and one nose. They had no ears or teeth. They were small with unusually large heads. They had large eyes but no eyelids. They had no genitals. Each arm had six fingers. They had shark-like skin. Their size and shape matched the metal reclining seats you saw on the alien craft. Upon their arrival in Fort Worth, the bodies and remains were immediately loaded onto other vehicles under intense pressure tracking and sent to another location. Dad said he thought they were all sent to Washington. Several years later, Sean's father, through his connections, learned a lot of additional information about what happened next to the debris and alien bodies. In particular, he discovered that many military personnel took with them as souvenirs many parts of the alien craft. He learned that the inscriptions on the object from the vessel could not be deciphered and studied the debris and devices from inside the vessel showing their very strange properties. Specifically, it was found that the vessel itself and all the materials it contained were somehow grown, quote unquote, as separate pieces at the molecular level, crystal by crystal, one molecule at a time. The materials were ideally arranged in a geometric grid with molecular alignment, creating unusual alloys and amalgams with properties unavailable in natural materials. Scientists have not been able to replicate the material or determine how they were made. The structure of the aliens' bodies was also carefully studied. These creatures had a circulatory system but no digestive organs. It was then found that they somehow absorbed the nutrients through the skin. These creatures had an unusually large brain with four hemispheres separated by bony plates and an unusually large amount of sensory nerve tissue throughout the body arranged in a specific order. The creatures were linked to the vessel using unknown spirit power, quote unquote, wireless technology and were an integral part of the vessel as in the Vimanas. The creatures and the vessel functioned as one. The creatures were not just the crew members or passengers of the ship, but were a functional part of the ship itself. This reminds me of what the um, Argonauts and their ship Argo uh, was like. Let's remember all the Argonauts were kings and princes. They were not just laborers or slave uh, sailors. They were uh, very significant, important royalty of various uh, king kingdoms of uh, ancient Greece. And the ship was able to read their minds. They didn't have to talk to it. It was able to read telepath their minds telepathically. At one point, the ship, the Argo, told the rest of the people in the crew to get rid of Hercules because the ship couldn't stand hearing or listening to his thoughts. But let's go back to this. The creatures were like industrial robots designed for a specific function. They were developed in laboratory using methods similar to our other shipboard material, the other shipboard material. Their flesh and bones showed molecular alignment and were unusually elastic. It was decided that the creatures did not match the physical appearance and biological type of the creatures that designed and built the alien craft. It's believed that the creators of this technology were significantly physi physiologically different from each other. The brains of these creatures were found to serve as a ship's computers. The vessel and components operated with non-natural energy. The energy it fueled was defined as a form of focused consciousness or thought power. It was determined that the cause of the accident was that it was struck by lightning. The lightning apparently affected one of the creatures, showing somehow disrupting the balance of power controlling the vessel. The craft could not function properly if all the creatures did not act in unison. The origin of the vessel has never been established, it's believed to have originated A, from another planet within the galaxy or from another galaxy in this universe. 
B, from a planet to another dimension, it was found that the craft can move and maneuver faster than the speed of light. Capable of instant dematerialization and rematerialization, thus moving it from one place, from place to place or between different worlds, ignoring the known laws of physics, it has been established that the starship can travel several light years at a time, somehow traveling in a bubble of space-time or space-time bending around it and jumping dimensions. It was found to have the ability to travel between dimensions and was believed to be able to travel through time as well. Attempts have been made to reverse engineer all the technology found on board the craft with limited success. Another identical craft was recovered intact but never operated. The craft could not function without the presence of the creatures, who were the most important functional component of the machine. There have been unsuccessful attempts to clone the creatures. Note, it's obvious that these extraterrestrial probes were not reptilian creatures like the greys because they are not cre creators of matter with the power of mind. These are divine powers of the divine kind. These have other ramifications beyond all imagination for many who reach the creation of the original uh, human race until the creation of all these things around us on earth. All of this greatly influenced my father, Sean said, for the rest of his life. Before this event, he was extremely interested in all types of aircraft, especially advanced propulsion systems. But when he saw what he saw, he felt for the rest of his life the desire to understand how UFO works and reproduce the, the, the technology. He became obsessed with the subject and dreamed way up ways to reproduce their propulsion system. He stated that it was possible and that people he knew had already worked hard to achieve that goal. He says, I have been keeping my father's secret for many years. He died unexpectedly a few years ago, and since then I have not been able to figure out what to do with the information he left me. I think now it's time to reveal them, Sean said. Please leave your comments about this. And thank you for your support. I really support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.